by next Sunday, next Sunday will be our media Thanksgiving service. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So we're going to pray. And we're going to pray a lot, firstly, in other tongues. We're going to... And this is how you pray. Just count back what the Lord has done from January to now. January, February, March, April, May, June. In the next few days, June is over and we gradually bump into July. I want us to read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 16 and 17 to us as we pray this prayer of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Of course, this is a spirit-filled church, so we pray in tongues, but it's good for us to understand why we pray and what we pray. So look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 16. He says, Else when thou blessed with the Spirit, now when he used the phrase, blessed with the Spirit, he primarily refers to speaking with tongues. He said, How can he that occupied the room of the unlearned say, Amen, at the giving of thanks? Notice something. He says, When you bless with the Spirit, see what it says. It's equal to giving of thanks. I want you to notice that. He says, When you bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say, Amen, at the giving of thanks? That means every time we speak in tongues, one of the things that happen is that we're giving what? Thanks. The problem here is that when you now speak in tongues, for example, if I speak in tongues for one hour here and there's no interpretation, how do you say amen? He says, how would the unlearned say amen at the giving of things, seeing that he understandeth not what thou sayest? Verse 17. Verse 17 says, and this is very powerful, for thou what? Paul says, when you speak in tongues, giving things well, like it's on another level very powerful so i'm only saying to you because some of us speak in tongues and we don't know the reason why we speak in tongues every time we speak in tongues we're giving thanks well we're giving thanks well so i want you to think of what the lord has done and we're going to spend the next few minutes and give thanks well are you ready Let's go ahead and thank you. Let's go ahead and thank you. Let's go ahead and thank you. Pray the Holy Spirit. Pray the Holy Spirit. Ronde kara sos ka draga di na rush ka pora na daskas. Vivo ratende de rebo ko te de rush ka de rebo tus. Shet tolo rebo ko te de rio sos ko tolo rodiata. Shet tolo ro o te de rush ka pora na pram na pram na bandi o. Vivo ro ho shata ba na gara so ko tolo ro ko tolo na mushya. Sisto ele pora ko tolo ro ro ko ko te de rebe pora na saga baralia. Lepe tolo ro te kes ke de rebe te kes ko ko mudu. Ligo robo shanda mi kreke te de bush Son tolo robo polo robo selere makuri ma santa haya In Jesus name we pray Isaiah chapter 54 verse 13 This is the next prayer point Isaiah chapter 54 verse 13 And some of you this prayer point will refer to you right now Some of you to be in your future But let's read together I want to go And all thy children shall be thought of the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children some of you you are single here so we are going to have children at one point or the other some of you have children already some of you have grandchildren already the bible says great shall be the peace of your children you are going to pray every time i hear about my children and grandchildren it will be peaceful news amen my children will bring me peace not trouble their marriages for those that are married, their marriage will bring me peace, not trouble. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. 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 He said, Our children will be taught of the Lord. He said, Great shall be their peace. Father, we are praying, O God, great shall be the peace of our children. Let both and the Russia tell the God of Ohio. Grandchildren, great shall be our peace. Our spiritual children, great shall be their peace. We can man talk about Luther and the Gita. Great shall be the peace of our children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No one here will bury their children. Amen. I said no one here will bury their children. Amen. Every 
attack on your family we command it cancelled every attack on your marriage we command it cancelled in the name of the Lord Jesus the Bible says except the Lord watch the house he said they that watch watch in vain he said except the Lord build the city they that build build in vain the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the God of Jacob the God of the prophets the father of our Lord Jesus Christ you have been the one with us yes, from January yes, to February, yes, March, yes, April, yes, May. You, now we are in June. Yes, ah, Ebenezer, he that told us the Lord helped us. Yes, Lord. Our rock of help, our rock of help, our rock of help. We've come to return the glory. We've come to return the glory. We've come to return the glory. Thank you for life. Thank you for good health. Thank you for answering our prayers. You have not allowed people to ask us, where is your God? Yes. Is your God sleeping? Yes. We thank you thank for you answering Jesus. our prayer, showing up, showing out. Father, we bless your holy name. 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 The single are getting married. The married are having yes. children. Ah, thank all glory Jesus. to God. People are becoming grandmothers, becoming grandfathers. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Business is doing well. Ah, things are hard globally, but you made a way for us. Those businessmen here, business and ambitious women, thank you for the progress. Those in paid employment, thank you for appointment. Thank you for promotion. Father, we're grateful. Ah, through next level. You have healed the sick, yes. healed cancer, yes. healed deafness, yes. giving children to the body, yes. healed children. Yes. Thank you for white press. Thank you, thank you for Jesus. NLP London. Thank, thank you for NLP Canada. You, we have Jesus. come to say thank you. Thank you oh, somebody Jesus. say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. To the giver of all things thank you thank you jesus the truth is that it's not him that will it it's not him that run it it's of god assured mercy yes lord thank you that we found mercy in your sight thank you jesus we give you praise hallelujah in Jesus name we pray amen praise the Lord please you can have your sins amen you must always slow down and remind yourself that it's not him that will it it's not him that run it it's God that showed mercy hallelujah just a couple of announcements just a couple of announcements the first one is um, next week Sunday is very special Please, I wanted to come. So next week, so I want to apologize in advance. Sometimes, you know, you, someone can sit with you, the big gilly in front of you. And the reason why that happens twice in a year in our church, it's our, mid, it's our midweek Thanksgiving. We, hallelujah. Yeah, so we have the end of the year Thanksgiving and we have the midweek Thanksgiving. It's an opportunity for us to come together and just come and think about, celebrate the goodness of God. What I wanted to do personally is to take out time on your phone and notebook, write one to seven things you're grateful for. What has happened this year? And look back until you, until you think you cannot be grateful. Until you think you cannot be grateful. So look back and look to one to seven things that the Lord has done. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Please remember, if you have family and friends in Canada, we are going to Canada for Next Level Prayer Conference in Canada. Glory to God. Yeah, it's, um, it's going to be really, really powerful. I'm asking you that if you have friends in Canada, please call them and say, have you registered? Have you picked up your ticket? Pick up your ticket and make sure you are there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We had a very powerful, I mean, this week in NLP was very powerful. And it's going to, yeah, we had powerful testimonies. A lady messaged and, you know, she messaged me directly on Instagram and I was fortunate to be able to see it. You know, and she said, 13 years of barrenness he said i joined nlp he said one of the days after the prayer i slept back i saw you in my dream and you told me that you will get pregnant he said he said and that was all i needed 
He said, this is 13 years. No drugs, no IVF. Doctors, when everything, I, see, after 13 years, I've tried everything, I just give up. He said, I brought my baby to come and say thank you. Praise God. In the fourth service on Sunday, I didn't even know one of the ladies, I, I knew her when she lost her baby. Initially, she got pregnant, I think about seven or eight years, something like that, seven or eight years, she got pregnant. And the, what I remember that she lost the child in a miscarriage. And I remember that in church, she just broke down and started crying. I said, what happened? He said, Pastor, God gave me a child. How did I lose the pregnancy? And I said to her, there's nothing God has done he cannot do again. And there's nothing Satan can, has done that God cannot do. She was still flowing in so much tears. I saw her last Sunday. Carried that baby, I think after eight or nine years. You know. And that's why me, I'm grateful. You don't say, because we can pray. Mm, because we can pray. If you want people that pray, go to Ibadan. Go to Ikiti, on the mountain. There are prophets that don't come down. They, stay, they live on the mountain. It's not about you can pray. It's God. I show it, mess. Praise God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. It's God. I show it, mess. Hallelujah. So let's take, let's, let, let's prepare for that. So NLP conference. And this week NLP. So because um, this week is like the last week of the first half of the year. It's very special. From Tuesday, you can come in. We're going to have very strong praise and worship sessions in the morning. Before we flow to prayer, end up with this will be very special, long and short. I'm sure you saw the video earlier on. So make sure that if you've dropped off, kick it up and let's do it again. Praise God. Are we ready for God's word? Yes. How has this series on spiritual growth been? Yeah, the series I found their way to social media almost every day. One big blog is carrying the teaching, and people would uh, sometimes they will appreciate it, sometimes they will abuse it, but it doesn't make a difference. You're not talking to them, you're talking to the church. Hallelujah. So we're talking about spiritual growth. So, and the reason why it's challenging is that um, we're saying things are not comfortable. You know, we're saying things are not comfortable. I, I know one of the videos that went viral was when I was saying that, why do you need to sleep with a girl to help her? Why is it that when men ask for, when a lady asks for help, the next thing you want to do is sleep with her? You're a Christian. Why do you want to do that? You know, and, uh, you know, here and there. But the key thing is that as Christians, we need the opportunity to just reset. And remember herself that, you know, there's a Christian life. Apart from the fact that God blesses, apart from the fact that God does a lot, there's a Christian life. There's a, there's a decent Christian life. And one of the challenges of the church is that the church teaches a lot about how God wants you blessed, prosperous. But when it comes to the Christian life, there's not a lot of teaching about it. So people don't do well in those areas. You know, just like next week, next month, we're talking about, next month's teaching, we're talking about heaven and hell. We're talking about the rapture. We're talking about last day, last days, the rapture, heaven and hell. Just to remind you, because we must be reminded, there's heaven and hell. We can't just be saying that um, God will give you a breakthrough. Yeah, it will, but there's also heaven and there's also hell. Praise God. So a church must be balanced. A church must be balanced. Are you ready for the word of God today? Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. So help me invite all your friends to join Next Level this week. It will be powerful. And from Tuesday, if you're, if you're around, just make sure you're here physically and we'll do that. Second Timothy Chapter 3 in verse 1. And this is one of the teachings on the last days. So, so Paul was talking to Timothy about the last days and he was telling him some signs of things that would happen towards the end of time. He was saying that these are some signs of the things that would happen towards the end of time. It says this know also that in the last days, perilous, perilous is difficult times. Difficult, that's an awful perilous. It's a perilous time shall come, verse 2. For men, so it begins in verse 2, to list out the signs of what will happen in the last days. The kind of changes you will see in the last days. He says, in the last days, for men shall become. He says, for men shall be. So this is not what they used to be. He says, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous. Covetous is when you, when you want somebody else's thing. Hey, you know, let me tell you something. Single people. If a Christian sister is dating someone and you are parabolated about it, you are covetous. You just need to know that. It's not right. It's not right. See, this is not right in any word. For someone to be dating and because you are richer, you begin to use their money to entice the girl. You begin to use the money to drag her. No. If you are a Christian, that is covetousness and that is oppression. 
And if you are the girl, and because the guy is, you know, all of a sudden is throwing money at you, you now begin to see the flaw of the one that's been with you for several years and be like, oh, well, you know, I was just managing and all of those kind of things. Just know that you're about to enter in one chance. The reason why is that by the time you date him also, this guy that is all nice, what will happen to you eventually is that you will begin to see his flaw and there'll be nowhere to go to. And there's no one you marry, including the Pope, that will not have flaws. Glory to God. The successful marriages, this is what successful marriages do. They focus on the 80% that is available, not the 20% that is unavailable. So, he says, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous. Then he says, boasters. Take note of the word, boasters. That's, I see so much of that on the social media. Boasters. Everything I want to show people. You know, I want to show, say I don't hammer. You know, you know it's just boasters. Sometimes when you talk to people, you know, they want to know that, you know, if they, if they are married women and have kids, they want to know, oh, my kids are here. My kids are here. They just want to show something. Have you not spoken to me before? And you just say, oh, yes, I just have the governor and the president and this and this. Both that. They just love to let you know that, hey, I'm not small or I'm big. Both that. He says, in last part, he says, proud, blasphemers. And, and you see it online. You know, all of a sudden, there's this rise against God, rise against Christianity. I'm not surprised because we're in the last days. The Bible will be blasphemous, then disobedient to parents. Ooh. Ooh. You're working, you're making money, and you're not remembering your parents. Just know God is watching you. That's not good. Don't say, I have my bills. Your parents had their bills and they sent you to school. Your parents had their bill and they nursed you. Now that you are working, save some and send back to your parents regularly. If you have the means, I believe that every month your parents should get something from you. And if you can't do that, you can make huge celebrations around their birthdays, around their this, and do something significant. The reason why is that you must never forget the tree that you came from. And anyone that forgets his source usually dries up. Is it disobedient to parents? Then he says, unthankful. Unthankful. These are signs of the last days. People you send money to, and they reply, T.S. Thanks. I'm telling you, pe- people you send money to, you, you send money to someone, and someone say, ah, that I was expecting more. Is, it, is this all you can do? Is it, bros, you can do better? You say, ah, now, nah, wow. You get the alert and they send you to do something. When you were looking for the money, you were calling, you were sending voice notes, you were calling, mark them. As soon as you got the money, for the first two hours, you behave as if you didn't see the money. The person now sends you payment receipt. You behave and you see you didn't send it, see it. Next thing, thanks, tears. I'm thankful. And the reason why you're unthankful is that you really feel that they owe you something. Listen to me, nobody owes you anything. And if someone does something for you, it's good for you to be grateful. And let me say about gratitude. Gratitude has a way of bringing back to you. He says, unthankful and unholy. But the focus of my teaching is the first line, one of the signs of the last days. He says, for in the last days, men shall become lovers of themselves. Another word for that is, um, you know, another word would be egocentric. Another word would be narcissism. When you take, you you are the big deal. Or self-centeredness. I'm not saying don't love yourself, but here he says men shall become lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves. You know, when I was younger, they used to talk about idols and they would talk about Ogun, Shongo, Amadiora, and those were idols in the village. But there's a new idol in our generation. You know what it is? Self. So people don't go to a shrine and bow down before a God like this. No, they bow down before themselves. They bow down before what they want, what they need. They, people are literally worshipping themselves. That's the new idol. The new idol is not in the shrine. The new idol is in the hospital. The new idol is the person we are worshipping. And that's why they call them a selfie generation. Why? The generation that worships self. He said that a time is going to come and this is the time. When people be lovers of themselves, what is, what is the worship of self? Excessive focus on your needs, on your desires, on your interests, and your well-being to the exclusion of others. 
We are in the generations that mothers want to have children and abandon them to enjoy their life. I was watching something online some time ago and this lady had four children and left it with the mother and the mother was, had to take her to court to, for the court to subpoena her to come and see the children and to get her to give some money to take up the children. And the, the judge asked the woman, he says, what exactly do you do? He said, I'm a health stylist. I got to travel. You know, I got to travel. I have all this high. And the, the judge says, are you listening to yourself? We're in a generation that where selfishness is invoked. Selfishness is in vogue. Self-centeredness is in vogue. It's when people die, we remember them. I mean, look at all of you that have parents here. You have, you, you have all this money you spend on yourself, but what more do you spend on your parents? Same thing. You have a lot of men that spend a lot of money on themselves, but they do not spend the money on the family. How can you be a married man? How can you be a married man and you are buying car for your side chick and your wife does not have a car and she's taking your children in Uber to this place and that place? What is wrong with your head? Are you sure that they're not smoking something in it? He said, for men shall become lovers of themselves. So that, that's all I'm talking about. So because, self, because this is the major issue. So you hear people that say, you know, I want to do what I want to do. I feel like doing what I want to do. You know, you prioritize. Are you praying? I don't feel like praying. Lovers of yourself. You do what you feel like. I don't feel like doing this. I mean, sometimes you, sometimes you see some men walking with their wives, walking with their girlfriends, some ladies pass, and you just see them, ooh, mmm, Listen to me, because you've thought yourself to be that way. Lovers of themselves. It's about, it's about what I want, it's about what I feel. But when you're a lover of yourself, it's always about what you want, never about what God wants. At the root of most marital, at, at the root of divorce is selfishness. Without selfishness, couples can never divorce. And the reason why is that it takes one couple to be selfish or both of them are selfish. And what happens is that someone just seems to be literally overprioritized, and the other person is underemphasized. And selfish people don't even know they are selfish. I'm telling you, they just think they are watching out for themselves. Self-centered people hardly know. When you meet people that are narcissistic in behavior, they think there's nothing wrong with them. They think there's problem is with you. That you just don't understand that all the attention must come to them as a person. So in the last days, the Bible says men shall become lovers of themselves. They shall become lovers of themselves. They prioritize what they feel. They prioritize what they need. They prioritize everything about themselves and do not care about the things of God. And the thing with self-centeredness is this. You can be, you can be a lover of yourself and be useful to God. No. You can be a lover of yourself and be useful to God. Let, let, let's read in the word of God. Are you ready for this? I said, praise God. What do self-centered people say? What would they say? Things like, what can I get? It's always about, it's always about what can I get from this? What, you know, it's all about what can I get from this? Always about things like that. Oh, what can I get from this? What do I want? It's about what can I get? What do I want? So you tell people like, um, in church, we need some people to help cancel people in marriage. You that you have been married for 20 years, 10 years, I wanted to sign up. You're like, I don't want extra work. It's because the reason why is that it's stressful to you. For example, you're coming to church this morning, there's someone that is weak in faith that says, pick me up. But you can't take that extra 10 minutes to pick them up and come to church. It's stressful to you. It's always, it has to be what you want. You know, the choir is singing and you're like, I don't feel the song. Excuse me, they're not singing for you, they're singing for God. Can you be humble? Who are you? Is I don't feel this song. Is this a performance? You don't know where David Doe and um, what they call it, and Lagbaja is, if you want to jam. He said, I don't feel the song. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about the divine purpose. When you come to church, you come for Sunday what? Sunday worship or service is a service to, is we come to serve on a Sunday. So it's not about us. 
It's a Sunday service. We come to serve on a Sunday. So, uh, during the prayer, for example, in our church, we have a principle. During prayer, you stand or kneel. Nobody sits down. So, you know, everybody knows. All our pastors know. So when we are praying, you stand or kneel. Nobody sits down. Because our God is high and mighty. If the governor comes in here right now, everybody will stand up. My God is superior to the governor. Even when the governor prays, he stands or kneel. And I'm saying that to you. I'm saying that for you to know. But now, all of a sudden, you want to pray. You know, I, I don't want to stress. Can you see? It's all about you. I don't want. The, the language of the selfish generation is I. It's me. It's I. Are you going to trust the things? I don't feel like going. It's I don't feel like going. Are you going to fast? No, no, no. I'm not a fasting person. I don't know a fasting person. It's everything about you. You are the new idol. Your majesty. Hey, we worship you. Oh, the idol you. Oh, wow. We worship you. The idol you. You are the new idol we worship. You are, and we continually worship you. And the Bible says in the last days, one of the signs of the Antichrist influence is that men will become lovers of themselves. And we need to say, that would not happen here. And if you love of yourself, you know what will happen to you? The first thing is this. You will not be able to devote yourself to God. The reason why is that spiritual devotions takes discipline. I don't pray every day because I feel like praying. It's a discipline. There are times I wake up in the morning and my body goes, nope, I don't want to pray. But I remind my body, it's not about you. It's about a superior calling. There are times on a Sunday morning, I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to come to church, but it's not about me. It's about a superior calling. You must enjoy denying yourself. Sometimes when it's time to tithe, and I'm like, oh, oh wow. You know, so, sometimes I don't know how this happens. When it's time to tithe, all of a sudden, bills start coming up. Then house bills, then these bills, and these bills. And so I'm like, it's like, let me postpone to next month. Listen to me. It's not about me. It's about the divine calling. Not my will, but yours be done. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Can we talk this morning? You can be going to Elisha every weekend and say, weekends are my time out. Listen to me. Weekends are not your time out. Saturday, Friday night, time out. Sunday morning is for worship. He said, what do you do on Sunday morning? That's when I do my laundry. Huh? He says, you will take the Sabbath day and make it holy. You've turned into laundry day. You can do your laundry, but let's make God first. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And let me say this quickly. You will notice a lot of politicians, successful business people, entertainers, social media influencers. When you get close to them, and I do get to close to a lot of them, you will notice the deep sadness that they have. Deep sadness that they have. And they're looking for something. And the reason why they have the deep sadness is this. They look rich on the outside, big on the outside, but at the center they are empty. And the reason why is that they are living a self-centered life. You're not designed to live a self-centered life. You're designed to live a Christ-centered life. Someone say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Okay, let's jump quickly. Mark chapter 8 now. Mark chapter 8 verse 34. Mark chapter 8 verse 34. Mark chapter 8 verse 34. So we're dealing with selfishness. We're dealing with selfishness. So the Bible says in Mark chapter 8 verse 34, and when he had called people unto him with the disciples, he said to them, whosoever will come after me. It says, hello, if you, if, you, if you value being born again, if that's what you want to do, that's okay. But whosoever will come after me. He said, this is the first step. He said, whosoever will come after me. He says, this is the first step. Let him what? Deny himself. He says, the first thing you have to drop is a selfie. He says you have to learn to say no to yourself. The reason why is that God's will and your will will collide. God's will and your will will collide. When God's will and your will collide, who has his way? He said, who will come after me? He said, the first thing he has to deny himself. What does deny yourself look like? Bring that rope for me. Bring that rope for me. Bring, come, my brother. This is what it means to deny yourself. Praise God. Ooh, stand here. Do whatever you want to do right now. Do anything you want to do. Jump, walk, anything you want to do. 
move on, move to the right, move to the left, put your hands in your pocket. You see, that's what it is. He can do whatever he wants to. He said, once you come to Christ, deny yourself. This is what deny yourself looks like. This is what deny yourself looks like. Will you go lower? Why go higher? Yeah, this is what deny yourself looks like. Yeah, and this is what it looks like. Thank you. Move now. Deny yourself means the things, the desires I naturally have before, I can't. The things I used to do before, I can't. Because now I'm following Christ. I've made the choice to be bound by superior values. He says, whosoever will come after me, I will deny. Hey, when I was not born again, when we sit in the office, we look to the window and we go, oh my God, look at Liquida. Oh, look at the backside. Tap, 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 but now that I'm born again, I can't be looking at the other side. If my eyes wants to look where it used to look, I will pull my eyes eyes. I said, these eyes are now sanctified. Because these eyes are not different. Those days when I go out, if I meet someone in the club, if I meet in business something, I mean, if it goes well, I, you know, just one night. And in the next one, we just put up our clothes and go there. But that's what I used to do. But hey, I can't do that again because I don't belong to myself. I can't be doing one night stands. So it's by mistake, either by mistake or intentionally, it makes no difference. I, 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 can, I, can, I can be a single person, you know, I can be a single person telling my boyfriend and saying that, you know what, I'm so horny because I'm ovulating. I'm so horny right now. Oh my God, the horniness is driving me crazy. Hold on, Essie. Excuse me, why are you telling me that? To edify my spirit? Yes, I'm only sharing my mind. Please don't share your polluted mind with us. Ah, ah. I'm very honey, yo. Ah, with this weather, with this weather, ah, yeah. Ah, I'm very honey. Why are you saying that? See, if you want to share, why are you sharing? Because what you're telling me is that come here and come and help me. Come here and do something. Big daddy, come quickly. See, that was how you used to talk before, but now you're born again. You can't talk that way. If you get honey, say in the name of Jesus, thank you for the peace of God. That surpasses all understanding. I, I bring my body under the subjection of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and when you say that, you know what to do? You get a quick shower. You get a quick shower. You know, first of all, you run for like 30 minutes. Come back and get a quick shower. Take your Bible study. Go and meet a friend and say, let's do cell meeting. And, and the reason why is that whatever you focus on grows. If you focus on your holiness, you become what? Honier. But I'm, I'm not my own. I'm not my own. He says, if any man will come, let him deny himself. See, let me tell you, there's some conversation I cannot have. I'm sorry. See, I'm born again. There's some things I cannot say. There are some kind of plays I can't play. You can't be playing with yourself in the office and say, if I catch you, if I catch you. And the girl will say, eh, catch me now. What, what, catch me. What, 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 what do you have that used to catch me? You, 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 you that you're a smallie. He said, ah. If I handle you, if I, you know, and everybody's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the Bible calls it filthy jesting. You, you can't be talking like that now. The Bible says, let your speech be seasoned with grace. <laughs> we, we don't find all those extra sexual moves and all of those kind of things convenient. And you say, catch me now, catch me. You, if I do zero for you now, you'll not know where your, your brain will fly away. You are born again, man. If any man be in Christ, a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He says, if I will come, the first thing I will do, this is myself. This is what I want. I will deny myself. Question, when last did you deny yourself? Every time there's fasting, you remember you have ulcer. You can't deny your, you can't deny your appetite. But you know, it's your destiny. Someone says, is that possible? The Bible says Esau ate away his destiny. He sold his better life. Some of you, once you see food, food, you 
you forget. See, it doesn't matter where you are, who you are, who you are with, what you are doing. You just start. And the food sort of makes you relax. Next thing, what will you drink? Ah, you say, I don't normally drink go, but anything you have, anything you have, anything you have, anything you have. And before you know it, you get into conversations, get into something you should not be doing. And the reason why is that you just don't know how to deny yourself. Can I say something? One of the things you must learn is this. No, thank you. It's an anointed word. No what? Thank you. Ladies, there are kind of gifts a guy will give you. You will know you want something. The anointed thing to say as a lady that has home training and Bible sense is to say, you know what? I would love to have this gift, but there's no way I can compensate this kindness and gesture. So I will have to say, no, thank you. You are, not re- that you are not rejecting your helper. You are just helping them know when payday comes, I'm bankrupt to pay back. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. And your friend will be like, ah, why didn't you take the ticket now? Should be just more thieves. Why didn't you, why didn't you take, why didn't you, should be just a small car? Why didn't you take it? The reason why, if I take it, when the payday comes, will you pay for me? And someone will say that, you know, I didn't know what you meant. So I just knew you were being kind to me. Are you a child? If you're looking for somebody to be kind to, wait for December. Santa Claus will come. <laughs> so I say, what about if you are a God-given helper? If they are your God-given helper, number one, they will help you in such a way that they will not be looking for anything to pay them back. He says, if any man will come, he would deny himself. This morning, you, how many of you felt like sleeping this morning? Wake up. You felt like sleeping some more. You didn't feel like coming to church. Congratulations, you passed the test. I'm proud of you. You passed the test. The reason why is that your, your flesh was saying, your flesh was saying, oh, Victoria, just a little more sleep. Just, you, will go for, you go for third service. You go for fourth service. You, you will go. And, and that's the trap. You know, when someone wants to trap you, it doesn't tell you no. You just begin, you begin to postpone. Next thing, something happens. See what it says. It says, if any man will come after me, he will deny himself. In the morning, you wake up in the morning, the first thing is not all the phone calls. The first thing is your nails will touch the floor. Father, I thank you for the gift of life and health. You are so good. You are so kind to me. If any man will come, he will deny himself. My flesh wants to grab the phone. My flesh wants to do this, but this is what I need to do. I need to pray. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Self denial means saying no to your own desires. Yeah. Saying no to your own desires. That's what self denial is. You're a married man, all your married friends have, all your married friends, you know, they, they, they say we're having men's trip, but in reality, it's men and their girlfriends, not their wives, going on the trip. You'd be like, you know what, I really love you guys, but I can't be in this company. And the reason why is that even if I go alone, you're going to fix me up somewhere. Because there will be one liquida that has to come with her friend, Ashika. There's going to be someone, because everything's going to, and I, I can't do that. You see, Christian question is that others may, I cannot. And I'm okay with that. Because I've made the decision. Others may, I cannot. Others, you know. The other day, my son was telling me, I was just asking about my son, and my son was like, he was, I said, what has shocked you the most about, like, faith and all of those things? Is that, he said that, it's the fact that my best friend, I think he went to their house, and I was like, oh, did you guys go to church? And they didn't go to church. He said, it never occurred to me that you can miss church. My son told me, I mean, my son is 15 years old. He said, it never occurred to me that you can miss church. He said, it was such, he said, it was such, like, a light bulb moment. I'm like, you didn't go to church? How come? The reason why is that even when we travel, we find church to go to. You don't understand. When me and my wife did honeymoon, we traveled for one week. We went for midweek service in another country. We like we went to Ghana. I'm like, ah, it's Wednesday. We should be in another church. What church is here? Let's go for midweek service. And the reason why is that God is not something I'm taking something for. I love Him. It's a heart for Him. It's not about what it does for me. He's done a lot already. I love Him. So he says, if anyone will come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. 
So you have to deny yourself. Let me, let me, you know, something, something struck. Some of you, because you were raised, because you were raised by very mean people, you don't know what it means to be kind. Learn kindness. Show compassion. Learn kindness. Someone is sending plantain. The plantain bunch is 5,000. Everything she's selling is 25,000. You will price and price and price and price. What will it cost you to say, take an extra 2,000 and go? Get Christian. Someone is selling sugar cane. Sugar cane. Sugar cane. Each stick is 200. You say, three for 500. <laughs> three for 500. The whole sugar cane is selling is up to 10,000 naira. And that one is not enough for your airtime for two days. Show kindness. When people bring back change, give them. Praise God. It may not be the way you were raised, but the Bible says you will deny yourself. Someone says, well, you know, I, you know um, maybe we're asking for people to serve in the married women's ministry. And by the way, men, men get ready. We have our men's prayer meeting in July. You know, yeah. You know, praise God. Maybe you want to serve in women's ministry or you want to serve here. All of a sudden, I don't have time. I don't feel this way. I don't feel that way. I'm like, the thing is that it's not about you. This is the point. The point that you've put you on a very high pedestra. Bring you down. You is too high. Bring you down. It, it will always be not my will. Yours be done. Come and be an usher. I'm shy. Can you hear? I am. It's always about I. Shy. You. Don't like. I like. I don't like. You need to take all those words and bury it. And say, so when it comes to God, God is first before me. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Why? If any Bible says, if you come after me, you will what? Deny yourself. Move. Oh yeah, take your wallet. Hug me. He can't move. It's no longer his will. It's the will of the one that has held him. Not my will, Lord. But yours be done. Not my will. If any man be in Christ. So if you, if you come after me, you must deny yourself. Glory to God. Let me show you some example of denial. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Thank you, sir. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. So what is denying yourself? Denying yourself means saying no to your desires. Saying no to your feelings. Saying no to a lot of things. And I want to say something to you. you know, I told you that I never planned to be a pastor. This was a, you see, the, the biggest fight I had with my parents was to choose to become a pastor. My, my mother literally just disowned me. Literally. I mean, I saw my parents, my mom's friends yesterday. One of them was 89 years old and they were doing big, big birthdays. You know, and, and they said, pastor. And they were just memory. They said, ah, we didn't need to be like this. So. And the reason why they said so was that I remember when my mother called for a meeting for all her friends and I was in the center. And they were now talking one by one, tongue lashing me. But I kept on saying that it's not my will. I did, it's, it's not, my mother said, shut up. What, not your will? You that you are lazy. He said, you've been lazy from bed. I, I didn't know someone could be lazy from bed. He said, you've been lazy from bed. My mom is late now, so her friends are looking back and said, ah, we're so short-sighted. We didn't know that was the will of God. And that's the thing. The will of God sometimes does not show in short term. It takes long term for it to show. Be patient with it. You are making some right decisions. In the short term, there may be losses. But in the long term, you'll come back and be like, wow, I'm glad I did the will of God. I, I'm, see, I look back. I don't know what my life would have been if I'd taken that job in Fountain Trust Bank. I remember the name of the bank accurately. In Fountain Trust Bank. I can remember. I went to Papa to do interview. You'll have not seen me now. I will not be the person you say, manager, my debit did not come back. You, you, are, you are very stupid for saying that. I'll say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Praise God. I said, praise God. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 and 1 John 3 verse, first, uh, um, John chapter 3 verse 30. See what Daniel said. The Bible says, and Daniel proposed in his heart 
that he will not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. Every other person was eating from the king's meat, but because the food of the king was offered to idols, Daniel said, I'm sorry, I can't do this. I can, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't stay in that room where they are just having all these sexual talks and sexual talks. I'm sorry, I can't do this. Sometimes we Christians forget that bribing is a sin. It's not a sin in Nigeria, right? It's a lifestyle. But it's a sin. See, he said, and Daniel proposed in his heart, I will not defile myself with the portion of the king's feet. He said, he proposed in his heart. He said, no, with the wine which he drank, I don't mind, I don't know who is on the table. He says, wherefore he requested of the prince of the Enoch that he might not defile. Look at the commitment. In the office, best staff. In your industry, best this. In the house of God, what, what are you best at? Nothing. Because in the house of God, your job is to sit down and look. Meanwhile, God is calling you to serve in a department. Join those that feed the poor. Join those that feed children. Help in the prayer department. No! Because I don't have time. The only person you don't have time for is your creator. The one that gave you time. John chapter 3 verse 30. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. John, before Jesus Christ came into the ministry, was in a large group of people. So when Jesus Christ came, you know, John baptized Jesus Christ, then all of a sudden, John's crowd began to reduce. So his disciples now went to me and said, Sir, the guy you baptized, Jesus Christ, everybody's going to him. Ah, do something, do something, do something, do something. John told them, this is what Joseph was. He said, he must increase. I must reduce. I is too much. Come down. Your eye is too much. Everything, I, 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 calm down. I, 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 I must dress the way I want. See, I'm not just to say to anybody, I just want to dress the way I want. Ah, ah, with all this breast showing. Hey, ah, calm down, sir. Calm down, calm down, calm down. I, I, I just talk the way I want. If I use effort, I use effort. Use your imagination. It says he must increase. The way I spend money, he must increase. In, in your finances, did you hear that? He must increase. We can see your finance in Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton, you even have accounts. You even have accounts in what they call it. Give me another store now. In Prada, you have accounts. In heaven, no accounts. Because your account is of the flesh. He said he must increase. So, I will, I will do things that are not naturally my desire because he must increase and I must decrease. Praise God. Look at him and say, he must increase and I must decrease. On your social media, decrease. Ah, your picture. Once you eat rice, now you post. Once you buy shoes, you post. Have you ever posted to all my friends I don't know Christ? Give your life to Christ. No. That one will not trend. Your, 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 your views are, how many likes? How many comments? Is it trending? He must increase. I must increase. If I see your social media, is there any proof that you're born again? There's no proof that you're born again there. Even the small time you post, it will be a story. It's can disappear. Like someone said, he said, if you are arrested, would there be enough evidence to convict you that you're a Christian? He must increase. And I must decrease. The eye is too much. Decrease. Decrease. Do they know you in your office as a Christian? Do they know yourself as a Christian? Or just, just know you? Some of them know you as the one that organizes babes. Some of them know you as the one that moves money for everybody. Some of them know you as the one that, that connects people. It's time for them to know you as a Christian. Why? He must increase. And I must decrease. How do you make a decision? The first thing is that how do you become self, how do you practice something? And the first thing, decision. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, and Daniel proposed in his heart. Proposed in his heart. Propose. You must propose in your heart. That's it. 
Sunday, come rain, come sunshine, I'm there. Every day, prayer. Start things like no scripture, sorry, no Bible, no breakfast. BB. No Bible, no scripture, no breakfast. No scripture, no sleeping. 365 days of celibacy. Some people just laugh. <laughs> you didn't mean that. <laughs> ah, we just die. <laughs> you will not die. The Holy Spirit will help you. One 30 days of clean language. No F word, no swear word, clean language. 30 days of not looking at women. Praise God. I said, praise God. 30 days of praying with your children. You never used to do it. You say, I don't have time. He must, 30 days praying with my children. He must increase. And I must decrease. So the first thing is, sit sit down. Let's read read this. Just the first line. He wants to go. But Daniel proposed in his heart. He would not defile himself with a portion of the king's bed. Where did Daniel start from? Number one, he proposed in his heart. Question is that, what decision are you making today? This is the end of this series. What decision are you making? Okay. Because without decision, there can't be progress. What decision is it? You could feel challenge. You could feel this and this. What decision is this? Listen to me. If you subscribe to a pornographic website in this service, no one you go and bring out your phone and start unsubscribing and delete your subscription. You have private mood or private something. Delete it. Because I'm not going back there again. The toys they used to masturbate Burn it. Was it toys? Oh, yeah. I know the generation I'm talking to. <laughs> Single people have more sexual toys than married people. This is the generation where singles have more sex than married. People say we are very close. No matter how close they are single. You know, when, you are, when people are single, you wonder what is private. Is it your body or your phone? The reason why is that I thought your private property was your body. But singles can share their body, but they can't share their phones. Let's pray. Oh. <laughs> because all the table have been shattered this morning. Uh. <laughs> Amen. 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 So the first thing is a decision. The second thing is prayer. Why is prayer important? By the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. You can't be like, you can't have fun voucher and say, from today now, stop pornography. You, you get the power. One small demon will just wink at you, you are falling. When Jesus' flesh wanted to dominate, Jesus went to get the money. How do you disagree in the flesh? He went and prayed, not my will, just be told. Holy Ghost, crush this thing. Hey, Holy Ghost, crush this thing. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, crush ammo. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, crush ammo. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, get your microphone. Holy Ghost, crush ammo. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, crush ammo. I don't know why they're not playing. I don't know what they're waiting for. They, they, they. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, crush ammo. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, crush ammo. Amen. Eh? Uh-huh. Crush ammo. Amen. When your eye wants to look in the wrong place, just remember Holy Ghost, 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 Chief is calling Holy Ghost, 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 When you hear, step over, come over, step over, come over, weekend, Holy Ghost, 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 Shall no man prevail. 
Then the third thing is this. I can't go into this. Set healthy boundaries. What is a boundary? Most of you, your boundary is too low. Set a boundary that if I break that boundary, it's not a sin. Uh-huh. So, for example, someone say, Pastor, what is wrong with sleeping over in your boyfriend's house or going on vacation with your partner if you choose not to have sex? That, biblically speaking, it may not be a sin, but seeing it at your doorstep, you have connected to his wifey, you just need me to download. <laughs> so you put boundary that I don't want to do this because if I do, so if this is my boundary, but when you don't have that boundary, the boundary is that I will not do sin. The moment you fall, you just fall inside. So set boundaries that are farther away. Then have accountability. Call two or three people and I say, I've made this decision, I want to be accountable to you. There's this girl, oh. ha, there's this transaction. If I do it, it's one million dollars. But I know I'm stealing. I'm telling you so that you can be asking me because they are pressurizing me. Uh-huh. Sunday morning when I don't feel like going to church, sell the that. Call me. If you don't call me, bank my gates till I open the door. Praise God. Let's pray. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Amen. Stand on your feet, everyone. Amen. Stand on your feet. In our church, we stand to pray. Yeah, you stand to pray. We stand on kneel. Uh-huh. The prayer for you is this. What decision are you making? What do you need the help of the Holy Spirit? Let's go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead. You can play. You can play. Yeah. As we are. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, I want to thank you for speaking to not just the church, even to me and to all of us, about areas we need to specifically make adjustments. And Lord, we've heard. And we're making decisions, we're making habits, altering values to become better Christians. We ask for your strength, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we make the decision, let the strength of the Holy Spirit support and power us in Jesus' name. This year will be different for us spiritually. We will live a life of integrity, sold out to Jesus, obsessed with God's divine purpose. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our life will become more useful to you as we surrender our will to yours. In Jesus' name.